start of the new year, North Korea does this type of test that shines the light back on it. But there are two things to keep in mind. One is that the broader context, there are a number of countries now pursuing hypersonic uh, missile technology and capabilities. And the second is that North Korea, in many respects, is still trying to claw back from the collapse of the Hanoi summit. This goes all the way back to February of 2019. That was the last major summit between uh, Kim and Trump. And so from that perspective, uh, building up the capabilities to have a stronger bargaining position is one interpretation that is growing in terms of popularity right now. But the key thing right now also is if you look at the responses in the menu of choice and how to respond to something like uh, what North Korea claims, a hypersonic missile test, those response tools are limited. And I think that's one of the quandaries that we're going to likely hear after the UN Security Council meets on Monday, New York time. John, can you explain to our viewers who are not military wonks why this uh, potentially affects the military balance in the region, why it poses uh, a threat uh, to the broader region? Is it uh, the uh, range? Is it the uh, delivery system, the warhead it can carry? What is it about hypersonic missiles? It's all of those things and more. If you break it down, uh, the technical definition of a hypersonic uh, vehicle is that it travels at greater than five times the speed of sound. Uh, with respect to what North Korea is testing and, and the capability that it's trying to develop, it also is going to be able to fly low. And something that is really tricky when it comes to ballistic missile defense systems that exist right now, it's maneuverable. And so with those capabilities and those attributes, North Korea's nuclear arsenal becomes ever more potent. We also have to keep in mind that North Korea is developing other missile technologies as well, so they're diversifying in addition to hypersonic. Is South Korea, the United States and Japan taking this seriously? They're taking it seriously, but I, I would say from different angles. Uh, we just saw the press release uh, on Thursday from Tokyo after the two uh, plus two meeting. This is where the foreign affairs and defense leaders of Japan and the United States uh, meet uh, on an annual basis. Here, they basically announced the launch of a very serious high-level study group to look at hypersonic capabilities, not only coming from North Korea and the development activities there, but also China and Russia. So this is being elevated in terms of priority yes. and trying to figure out ways to respond to that. John, and herein lies the risk. Russia uh, has a deployable hypersonic capability. Uh, it's a strategic priority for China. The U.S. is expanding its program, and now the DPRK wants to join the club. Is this an arms race? And is there an even greater chance of a misadventure or a military miscalculation in the region? I do think there is an elevated risk when it comes to miscalculation, given the rapid pace of development activities of the various countries. It is reported in the open source information that China and Russia, as you stated, have a deployable hypersonic capability. When you look at the speeds at which these missiles, these uh, vehicles travel, uh, that's the part it, it drastically shrinks the response times. So you get into almost this situation, the 